Welcome to more World of Warplanes content from the Noble Q and in this video I'll be looking at the Tier 4 Tech Tree British light fighter, the Bristol 146. Hello there. Before we start, if you're familiar with my content but you're not yet a subscriber, could I invite you to consider doing so now? It's free and I'd really appreciate your support. With that said, here we are looking at the Bristol 146 on the tarmac outside my hangar. And historically, this aircraft never made it into operational service. It was immediately superseded by Merlin engine fighters, the famous Hurricane and Spitfire. And in the game, when you acquire this aircraft, stock, it's a tricky aircraft to fly. I would say it's no more than average. But this is an aircraft I find that comes alive with a good build, and we'll talk about what I've done later. For now, we're going to go and look at the base statistics of the plane. Here's a spreadsheet with all of the Tier 4 fighters, and you have a lot of choice. There are 18 of them. If I scroll along, you'll see them appearing. And the base characteristics for each of these planes is shown on this spreadsheet. Now, if you don't know how it works, there's a link in the description below to a short instructional video that will tell you most of what you need to know. I say most because I've added a little bit of extra information to this spreadsheet. However, if you watch that video, you'll get the idea. Where I thought I would end up was by telling you that I felt that this aircraft was best built as a term fighter. And that is a valid conclusion. But in looking at these fig figures, I found something interesting. More about that in a moment. Let's take a look at the gun armament first. And it's really good news. This is best in class weaponry. Uh, the rating is 11. The cumulative DPS is 200 and it's coming from 8.303 Browning machine guns. The one disappointing thing is that the range is only 1,444 feet. However, lots of the guns on the fighters are only 1,444 feet. So by and large, you're not going to be outclassed. This is good weaponry. Survivability. Of course, all of the figures will be fairly compressed for survivability. Um, the Bristol is fairly much in the middle, but the fact of the matter is, if anything with large weaponry is shooting at you, you're going to take damage and feel it very quickly. Here we come to the airspeed, and this was the first characteristic that made me feel this was more of a turn fighter than it was anything else. It's 29. It's not best in class. And if we scroll along, we can see that there are some higher figures appearing. Um, a 35 here on the French C714, the very fast Model 81A-1, another 35 appears for the XF4F-3, and then there is also the BF109B. So it's not the fastest, but as you can see, it's not horrendously behind even those fighters that we would classify as high energy. Fighters you keep fast, fighters you tend to keep high. When we come to maneuverability, there is a problem. The maneuverability is 79, which is okay, but as you can see from these figures here, there are plenty of aircraft which have significantly higher maneuverability. And that's going to be a problem if you decide to try and play this as a turn fighter when it's stock. It's going to be difficult. Altitude performance, rating is 26, and this again, is low enough to make me feel that it should be a turn fighter. If we go scroll along again, we can see that some of the altitude performance figures, for instance, the Model 81A, there's the BF-109B at the end, are considerably higher. But what really caught my eye and start, started me thinking differently were these power to weight ratios. Now, just think of these as numbers ex expressing how much power per kilogram you have in this case, or Turning it on his head, uh, an, a common imperial measure, effectively this is how much weight would you have to remove to theoretically gain an extra horsepower. So the higher you are for kilowatts per kilogram, the better, and the lower you are for pounds per horsepower, the better. But equivalent, effectively, they're measuring the same thing. And this is interesting. We've got second best in class power to weight ratios. This is likely to affect acceleration. Now, acceleration is a big unknown in this game, as I've discussed in an earlier video. But what you could say is that this aircraft might actually respond well not to a maneuverability build, although I think it does, as we'll see. It might also respond to a speed build. 
the drawback is the altitude performance. If you go for a speed build, not only will you lose maneuverability, but you are going to have to probably lose extra maneuverability because you're going to have to fly in the yellow altitudes quite a lot. Well, at low tiers, this may not be that much of a drawback. You might be able to rely on the inexperience of other players to be able to make that work. If we look at worst in class figures and see if there are any red, well, the survivability is not really a surprise. Six seconds of boost. The range is quite small for the boost figures. It goes from six seconds, which most of the fighters have. There are a few with better figures. For instance, this 2PA has 10 uh, seconds of boost. Maneuverability. Need to watch out for the roll rate. If you're going to make this for a maneuverable aircraft, you'll want to try and improve that. Also, the optimum range is quite small. That's the range in which the characteristics don't degrade. And again, that's something else to bear in mind. If you opt for a speed build, which means you're probably going to be trying to fly faster than 239 miles an hour quite a lot, then your maneuverability is going to degrade even further. So you may have the effects of both altitude and being outside of your uh, performance envelope. The altitude performance is sort of in the middle here. It's certainly not the worst. So what we have is an aircraft which hits hard. Stock is quite difficult to play because it's not got altitude performance to go and compete with the high energy fighters in theory, but it also doesn't have the maneuverability to cope with the um, out and out turn fighters, the Japanese aircraft in particular. But I'm going to show you two builds which you may be able to put into practice. One of them I think is the build which is more suitable for less experienced players. That will be the maneuverability build. And for slightly more experienced players, I would suggest there's the speed build. So let's go and see what I've done. Here we are back on the tarmac outside the hangar. And the first thing to say about my Bristol 146 is that it is specialized, which means of course, it has all of its equipment and consumable slots available. When you first get the aircraft, let's see what's missing. Well, it's actually not good news. You're going to be missing two slots for equipment, one for the airframe and one for the engine. And what this means is that you're going to be limited to just improving the accuracy uh, of your uh, guns or possibly mounting cockpit armor, armor, which I doubt you will find uh, helps you a great deal. And on consumables, you're missing one off the airframe as well. So I said this aircraft was tricky to fly stock. As you can see, it falls between um, being a turn fighter because it doesn't quite have the maneuverability you would like. And it's certainly not a high energy fighter if you assess it from the point of view of altitude performance. And then you get this as well, where you can't improve the characteristics for either turning or speed because both of the slots are locked until it's specialized. So this is truly an aircraft that stock can be pretty horrible to fly. Fortunately for me, I have actually got it specialized. Let's go and see what I've done on this build here. And this was my first thought as to what was best to do with this aircraft. It's a maneuverability build. So we have got the gun sight um, and we've picked off extra accuracy when firing at moving targets, which I think um, acts to uh, increase your auto aim angle. That is the distance by which you can be off target and you'll still uh, hit the target as the game corrects your aim for you. And also the accuracy of the forward firing weapons, which tends to um, make your dispersion angle smaller, which means that the shells, the bullets are grouped together more closely, which means that they will less likely to miss your target when you're firing at it. Then we have the lightweight wing frame. And as far as bonus characteristics are concerned, I've got an extra percent cruise speed down there. There is actually a characteristic for your maneuverability. If you really want the maximum amount of maneuverability, then you could pick off that bonus characteristic and substitute it for the cruise speed there. And then here we have a lightweight power unit again to try and increase the maneuverability. And there, there is also a characteristic for extra yaw um, so you could remove uh, one of the characteristics that I've got selected there. I've gone for a little bit of speed to try and make this aircraft just a little bit faster. But if you want the extra yaw speed, uh, the yaw, then you can pick off that characteristic. And there's also a bit of calibration that I could um, uh, uh, employ to improve the maneuverability even more. I'm reckoning that we could probably get the maneuverability up from the 95 that we've got here to 98. Maybe a bit more, I'm not quite sure, but certainly two or three points more. And bear in mind that the base characteristic, as you saw, was 79. So this is quite an impressive increase. We'll look at that uh, in more detail in a moment or two. 
The other possibility I mentioned, and I think this would possibly be for players who are a little bit more experienced and willing to experiment, you could take off this and put on your polished skin. I just happen to have an ultimate polished skin lying around because I'm lucky. I've got a lot of equipment. And even more luckily, I can take off the lightweight power unit and substitute it with an experimental upgraded engine. No boost uh, systems available on tier four aircraft. This is your only choice if you want to look at speed. And what we have here is uh, airspeed has gone up by set seven. And that's gone up to 38, which is also quite an impressive um, total. Again, we'll look at that in more detail when we do some build comparisons in a moment or two. On the polished skin, probably haven't looked for bonus characteristics here, but as you can see, we've got a yaw maneuverability there, cruise speed and maximum speed with boost activated. If we just have a look at the ones we haven't got, there's got acceleration whilst diving, probably wouldn't pick either of those. There is a 1% maneuverability in terms, you might pick that off to compensate for the loss of maneuverability, which I didn't speak about, of course. The loss of maneuverability is down to 78. That's actually one less than um, the base maneuverability because we've put on this equipment. As far as the upgraded engine is concerned, boost availability in the bonus characteristic, 7% engine cooldown rate. This is an experimental piece of equipment, bear in mind, and 1% acceleration with boost. If we just look at the ones that we haven't got, there's a maximum speed with boost activated. There's resistance to fire, which you might consider taking because, of course, an upgraded engine increases the chance of fire on the aircraft. Oh, there's tolerance to um, damage from fire as well. You might consider taking that one instead. If we just look at the survivability figure, it's gone down 14 points to six, uh, from 60 down to 46. So it is a significant risk. Nevertheless, I have still chosen, and I would choose to mount these particular consumables for both those builds. And that would be a first aid dressing package. So if I'm particularly if I'm in a speed build and I'm chasing heavies with rear gunners, for instance, and my pilot gets shot out, that's annoying. I can immediately heal him. Pneumatic control assist for helping those difficult dogfights, 10 seconds of extra maneuverability, and then universal ammunition. As you know, I don't use gold, so I'm not going to talk about it. So let's discuss pilot skills for those two builds. I've brought up the pilot dialog box and here's my pilot with his various skills. We'll talk through those in a moment, but I'm going to mention straight away. When the aircraft is stopped, you cannot mount either equipment to improve the maneuverability or the speed of the aircraft. And therefore my favorite skill, the first one that I almost always pick for fighters, is not appropriate, and that's aerodynamics expert. You've got a choice. You can either further improve the accuracy when the aircraft is stock, or you can improve the uh, eng um, power of the engine engine guru one or you could go for more maneuverability using aerobatics expert you're probably only going to get one skill i guess before you specialize maybe two of these those select um, one or two from this group of three it's up to you once you've got the aircraft specialized i would make a beeline for aerodynamics expert because i'm assuming you will go for one of these two builds or you could blend them of course you could go for a mixed maneuverability and um, speed build i haven't talked about that but it is a possibility bear that in mind uh, you might want to test that for yourself but either way you i expect you would want to get aerodynamics expert very quickly on top of whatever skills you've got and if you don't have them then depending on how you've built it for maneuverability, you would definitely go for aerobatics expert next if you haven't already got it. And then you might choose after that as your third skill, engine guru one to improve the speed or more accuracy, marksman one, probably this in a maneuverability build. It's all about being able to knock aircraft down quickly and moving on to the next target because probably you're in a lot of dogfights. If it's the speed build, then still you want to try and get to aerodynamics expert as quickly as possible. And then it becomes quite interesting. And this pilot is really more configured for a maneuverability build because that's how I've been flying the Bristol. But you might want to actually concentrate on getting engine guru one as your second skill, if not your third. And you might even want to then concentrate on trying to get engine guru two on the way you might take in marksman one, but then take it off and pop on engine guru two. Um, the loss of accuracy may deter you though, in which case you would actually do it engine guru one, marksman one, engine guru two, uh, and Marksman 2. And if I were to convert this aircraft to a speed build, I'd probably take off this extra skill here, the cruise flight, and probably pop it onto 
Engine Guru 3 as soon as I get another, sorry, Engine Guru 2, as soon as I get another free skill point. But bear in mind, Cruise Flight also improves the speed, and this is more about a speed build than it is a maneuverability build. Typically, I tend to go for resilience, but Cruise Flight would be a pretty good one for getting you about the map quicker. And bear in mind, as a Tier 4 aircraft, you're often going to be in Tier 5 battles, probably about 60 to 70% of the time, because that's just the way the game works. Uh, and you will end up quite a fair proportion of the time on larger maps. So Cruise Flight is quite useful, particularly when you're on those big areas. Okay, so in this case, this pilot is configured more for a maneuverability build. If you go for a speed build instead, then you probably want to concentrate more on these characteristics here, the Engine Guru 1, Engine Guru 2, and possibly the cruise flight. Okay, let's go and do some build comparisons and see what we've got. Here we are back on the trusty spreadsheet, but now what we've got are the base characteristics of the Bristol. And alongside it first here, we have a maneuverability build. I've labeled it agility because that's shorter. And then here we have a second build, which I've labeled speed. And we've got some differences columns, which are here and here. So let's talk about the maneuverability build first, along with the gun side, of course, there's an improvement on accuracy. Let's deal with that first. Um, because of the characteristics um, of the bonus characteristics in particular, we've been able to get the auto aim angle slightly widened, which is good because it means you can be off target by more and still hit your um, target from four to 4.2 degrees. And currently with that build, current level of calibration, and of course, pilot skills, remember, um, we've been able to get the dispersion angle down to below 0.6, which is pretty good for machine guns as well. With the stock um, guns tend to spray bullets around like all machine guns do at wide angles. And therefore, as the target gets further away, you're more likely to miss. Tightening that dispersion angle and making those bullets pack together more tightly is a good thing. And this is a pretty good figure and there's more to come. As you can see, that's a 27% improvement so far. I think the maximum you could manage if you really went for accuracy is 34. Um, but certainly 27 is a good, good improvement. And we've got a 5% improvement on the auto aim angle as well. So that's excellent. That's the accuracy side dealt with. And that's true, of course, for the speed build as well. So we won't cover that again. Survivability, there is a negative impact from the equipment that we've actually um, mounted. Hit points have gone down to 149. That's minus 11. That's almost a 7% decrease. Um, the damage resistance has also gone down by three uh, points as well. So that's a 7.5% um, decrease as well. Uh, under this particular build, though, be, uh, because I'm not using an uprated engine, there's no um, loss of fire resistance, which means mounting that first aid dressing package is all that uh, more uh, comfortable. Airspeed, we've got some tiny increases from the bonus characteristics that I've selected off the equipment for the maneuverability build. And there we go. And the rating has gone up to 31 and we've got a five uh, point increase in the cruise speed, 2.25%. It's nice to have, although it's not going to be that significant. Where we really score, as you would expect for a maneuverability build, is on maneuverability. Now, we haven't got your um, here shown here because there's no measurement of your in the game, but bear in mind that on top of what you're seeing here, there is also an improvement in your. So the rating has gone up to 95, which is a 20 over 20% 20 increase. And as I mentioned in the previous section, you could probably get that up to 97, 98, maybe a bit more. I'm not sure. So uh, even more uh, maneuverability is available if you calibrate and pick off different ca bonus characteristics. We have a 12 over 12% 12 improvement in the turn time. It's down to 7.54 seconds. And the roll rate, which is fairly horrible at 100 degrees in the space aircraft, is now a much more comfortable 127 or slightly above 27.2% increase. The long and short of it is that relying on the fact that for the most part, you're going to be encountering less experienced players who may not be able to turn as well as you. And bear in mind, I also know how to make an aircraft turn pretty well through use of flaps, pitch up, air brake, boosting at the right time and your, and if you're not using all of those things in your turns, I do recommend you go away and find out how to use them. I can often be quite competitive, certainly with unspecialized Japanese turn fighters eh, flown by inexperienced players. It's a different story. If they're specialized and they are flown by somebody experienced, then you are going to have to use slash and burn techniques. You cannot afford to turn fight with those. And that would be true of the aircraft when it's stock 
and you would need to be able to recognize that situation. But it is often the case that despite the fact that I am faced with a Japanese fighter, if it is not specialized, and if it turns out to be flown by somebody who perhaps hasn't learned all the tricks for getting the last ounce of maneuverability out of an aircraft, this is a very competitive turn build. And there's one extra little bonus. Um, because of the bonus characteristics, I've actually managed to tweak the climb rate very slightly. What happens if you go for a speed build? Well, we've already discussed the accuracy in the weapons. We won't cover that again. If we look at survivability, we have got some decrements again, but they're different this time. Uh, the damage resistance has only gone down by one point this time, so that's a little bit better. But what we do notice is that the fire resistance has gone down quite a lot. I still think this is a figure where you can still afford to um, mount a first aid dressing package, but bear in mind that you are going to suffer from this. And if you find under this speed build that you are catching fire and losing a lot of hit points to it too frequently, then you're probably going to have to invest in pilot skills, fire resistance or firefighter. And if you don't want to do that, and I always regret having to spend skill points on those skills, then you're going to have to swap to a fire extinguisher as a consumable. Speed build, as you would expect, we now have some speed. We're up to 38. And against most unspecialized tier four fighters, this is a competitive speed. Yes, there still will be some that are slightly faster, but now you're beginning to be in the realms of competing with them on speed. We've got an eight point increase, which is 20, over very nearly 27% um, increase. The cruise speed has gone up to 258 from a base of 205. That's a 26% increase. And even the boost maximum speed has gone up by four miles an hour to 321. So the aircraft is going to zip about a bit. We've even managed to eke out probably not truly a second of extra boost but a little bit more boost as well. And this makes this aircraft pretty nippy. Now, the downside of this build, of course, is that you lose all that lovely maneuverability that the other build has. We've actually gone to a rating of 78, which is actually one point less than the base. And the reason for that is because the turn time has gone up very, very slightly, 0.15 seconds to, uh, or nearly a 2% decrease. And there's also an effect on Yor as well, although the Yor is actually, if I remember on this, potential build is still a bit better owing to some of the characteristics I've picked off. We have managed to improve the roll rate very slightly, but you're not going to notice it. And again, the climb rate has gone up by six. Um, this time, uh, again, you probably won't notice that, but it's nicer than the opposite direction. Now, does this make this aircraft viable as a speed fighter? Well, again, it's depending a little bit on what enemies you're um, facing. Certainly if we're facing Japanese fighters, slash and burn becomes all the nicer because you can approach more quickly because you haven't lost that momentum as you approach. Hit them very hard with what is, as we know, excellent tier four weaponry, and then zoom away before they can turn and get on your tail with a bit of luck. Need to watch it with the key 43-1 that has very long range weaponry and they, those cannons hit really hard. But there's the theory for you. Um, you can also push the aircraft into the higher latitudes, uh, altitudes and chase down, for instance, air defense heavies, which actually is pretty tricky under the maneuverability build. It's not as easy. This works. I have actually tried flying the Bristol with this type of build on it, and it is definitely viable. You're gonna to have to rely, as in every game, on meeting the right sorts of aircraft, and there will be those maps and orders of battle which would favor a maneuverability build, and you'll regret having the speed build, but it's equally true that there will be maps and orders of battle where the speed build actually probably would work better. This, certainly for somebody who's more experienced, I would say is a viable build. And that's a surprise to me. So I'm glad I've looked at these figures. Anyway, I think it's now time to go and see an example of how this aircraft flies. And it's going to be with the maneuverability build. The map for the forthcoming battle is Scorching Sands. It's the leading edge variant. It's only a three sector map and it has a mining plant in the middle flanked by two forward airstrips. The mining plant is therefore strategically and tactically the be all and end all of this map because possession of this mining plant, if you get it quickly enough on its own, even if you never possess either of the two forward airstrips and the enemy does, will still win you this game. 
it gives you three x uh, three resources every five seconds of course but then on top of that every two minutes you get an additional 80 resources which is why it outweighs the two forward airstrips the two forward airstrips are really make weights here um Yes, it's useful to have one, and to be sure of winning the game, you'd want the mining plant for longer than the enemy, and at least one of the forward airstrips throughout the game. You can spawn there. That's not terribly useful in this particular case, because where else are you going to go? But the mining plant, it may be just a little bit nearer than the spawn point. That's about the only advantage. So, as I've said, the way to win this game is to hold the mining plant for longer than the enemy, certainly to get counts off it and prop deny the enemy any counts off the mining plant, and then possibly hold one of the forward airstrips. If we look at the order of battle, it's not great news. I'm top tier with my Bristol 146, and then I have my friends, the Grumpy Beard and Punk, coincidentally, but they're in a tier 3 flight with aircraft, which are basically um, better suited to a map which had a central repair base. And on the enemy side, they have a full complement of tier 4s and no tier 3s at all, a BF-109B, hugely dangerous aircraft and specialised, a BF-110B, okay it's not specialised but it's still hu hugely dangerous and in theory we'll be able to clear out our bombers from above the plant, and then they also have an overpowered bomber, The it's not specialised but the Heinkel 111H2 is devastating, and just by going by aircraft my team is at a serious disadvantage here. Let's see how this battle panned out. As we start battle, let me mention that this is a natively recorded file. The advantage of that is that the reticle or the gun sight will be accurately aimed, but the movement may be a little bit jerky. Just bear that in mind and off we go. Now, I've said that the mining plant is of paramount importance on this map. We have a very bad order of battle against us. We must all dive for the mining plant and hope to take it and keep it, um, even though the enemy in theory has superior aircraft. We've got to hope a little bit that they don't know what they're doing exactly. So here we go. Now this is the maneuverability build. So that's an advantage here. The speed build wouldn't be so much of an advantage with this particular map and this particular order of battle against us. Because I can, I take out a gun same with the chimney. I then use them as cover against the specialised BF-109 and that allows me to get behind him. He's not really paying me any attention anyway. I begin to shoot at him and he becomes my first victim. Good start. Put some shots into the ground attacker. Probably won't be able to concentrate on that depending on what's around me. Unfortunately that was the BF-110B which was sizing me up, getting destroyed by um, crashing into one of our ground attackers. Nonetheless, the plant has nearly been captured by the enemy. But I put down the ground attacker and buy us some breathing space. Now I can work on the other one. Lots of hit points on this aircraft. I mustn't let it shoot me or indeed ram me. So I break off, come round behind it. Put a few more shots into it and now I'll try and work some more space so I can have a longer pass. It's on fire so that helps. It had turned towards me which makes it slightly more difficult. And then it straightens up and I'm able to kill it. There's a brief pause where I look for my next victim. And here's where a speed build would have been handy. I could have probably climbed for that uh, FW57 much more quickly. And indeed I've lost so much speed I have to break off or I'll stall. And if I stall I'm easy prey for the enemy. See the BF-109 concentrating very hard on trying to shoot down the heavy. And because he pays me no attention as I'm shooting him, we're able to capture the plant. And indeed, we've actually got both airfields as well. And this is an example of why you should never quit a battle just because it, the odds look to be against you. At least play some of it. And if it really is a dead loss, then maybe quit the battle, although I don't like that. I think you should always play to the end. But as you can see, I was very concerned about the order of battle. And here we are, we've got superiority. I put down the enemy BF-110B, who's not doing the right things. Personally, if I'd been in the BF-110B, I would have made sure I'd got high at the start of the battle, cleared out our bombers, that would have certainly given us, given the enemy 120 points, 
towards taking this planting. It would have made it very difficult for us to take it. But by persistently flying low, and that's the second time he's gone into the plant low, he's exposing himself to us, the fighters at low level. Again, high hit point pull. Thank you very much for flying in front of me. I assume you wanted me to damage you, Hurricane. And despite shooting him down, one thing we can't cope with is their bombers, and therefore they very leniently seize this plant. And again, for the third time, the BF110B comes in low, but this time, even though it's not through his doing, the enemy has now taken the plant, and they've also got hold of one of the airfields, and now this battle is beginning to look like I might have expected at the start. And here's another mistake by the BF110B. He's turned. Now, somebody else is shooting at him. I was trying to save him, even though there was 12 seconds to go. It happened to be Punk. I actually had a word with him after the battle and said, in fact, I'm having a word with him right now. As you can say, you shot him down before the base unlocked. Try not to do that. That's throwing away, in that case, 60 hit points towards taking uh, the base back. And now it's so much harder for us. Having said that, there were 12 seconds to go. He may very well have burned out, and he might have got away as well, in which case we would have had to shoot him and destroy him whether we liked it or not. Hurricane flies obligingly, obligingly towards me. Because I've got the maneuverability build, it's very easy to get behind him and finish him off. And it's the same with the I-16. Some sterling work being done by my teammates as well means with that kill, which was the AR-80, we've actually got the plant back. We've denied the enemy account. And things are going just about as smoothly as I could have wished. And here comes the BF110B again, low level again. And for the fourth time, he's exposed himself to fighters, particularly me, but not only me. He's intent on shooting down the ground attacker, which he's got. And now, and only now, does he think about evading me. It's too late. There goes the winged legend. The BF109 doesn't get on me whilst I'm shooting the, ground, uh, the heavy. And now, in a turn fight, he loses. Down he goes. Grand attacker threatens me. Could conceivably land his heavy guns on me. Don't want that, so I get round behind him. Avoid the bomb. I have to break off because he's got such a high hit point pull. Give myself some space for a better and longer pass. Keep on working him over. Got to watch out for the bomb here. Just keeping my distance. At high tiers, that would have been too close. Down he goes. Another ground attacker is coming in. That looks like the heavy coming in for yet another occasion, but the ground attacker is on such low health, I can take him out before I have to worry about anything else. And the heavy puts me on fire, and I've got a fire extinguisher mounted, um, I've just noticed. That's since been substituted by a first aid dressing package, but I'm glad I had the fire extinguisher there. And down goes that heavy again. There goes the Hero of the Sky notification. And the game is won. There we go, Akamatsu, Winged Legend, Hero of the Sky, 18,000 plus personal points, and a win I didn't see coming. Just goes to show. Let's take a look at the outcome of this battle. And in the centre we can see it's a 5 chevron battle, Grade 1 fighter, and that grows 94,695 credits, or silver if you prefer, of which 31,500 just a bit over came from a premium account bonus. As far as expenses were concerned, concerned, there were none. The aircraft wasn't destroyed, and I used prepaid consumables as usual. I've got boosters running, so don't be fooled by these figures here. That's 5,086 experience, of which the base is 1,433, and premium count bonus 760. Most of that is coming from other bonuses, as you can see in that dialog box there. Similarly, with the free experience, the base is only 218, with 35 coming from the premium account bonus, but then boosters providing 762 more. Couple of tokens, these were for the Akamatsu Medal and the Hero of the Sky Badge. There's also a Winged Legend there. On the Personal Score tab, we can see that one of the class-specific missions was complete, but the, the both of the others were four-fifths complete. That gave me the total needed for the um, five chevrons. That was 18,245 personal points with two sectors captured. That's the mining plant twice, of course. Uh, aerial targets destroyed 16, 
damage to aerial targets 3,928 and 19 criticals. Didn't lose the aircraft, capture point 660, and that was divided 240 for defending and 420 for attacking. Team score tab, we can see that that was enough, both by chevrons and personal points to be placed first. That would have been on both teams. Punk, down tiered in a light fighter on a um, three sector map with the central mining plant. That's a really good effort, and it's lovely to see Grumpy Beard flying around in the game as well. Uh, the bomber, uh, probably less effective than I might have feared. And the BF110B didn't do the right things, as you saw in the game, so unfortunately didn't manage to carry it for his team. And the BF109B was a little bit less effective than I feared as well. So, nice game to win on an awkward map. That brings me to the end of this look at the Bristol 146. And stock, this aircraft is quite an ordinary experience in the game. But as soon as you specialise it, it comes alive. And I've shown a build which I recommend to less experienced players, the manoeuvrability build. And one for slightly more experienced players, I would suggest the speed build, which hadn't occurred to me as a viable option until I had a really close look at the statistics of this aircraft. And it shows the kind of flexibility that specialization can bring out, which was the point of this video. Well, I hope you found that helpful and that if you did, you'll come and see my future content. But until then, this is the Noble Q signing out.